All right, so as I said, we have oh, not one more video. We have a Salmonella Academy video we're gonna be checking out. I think most cities should be called Panormous. Sure. Hey, Billard. Thanks for coming through on this next video. Um, it's interesting seeing you for the first time all day. This video was made possible by NordVPN. Uh, Click the link below and get an exclusive deal. Nord, you will not get any more ads from me. All right, so next we're gonna be checking out of this. They wanna check out of this. We wanna check out of this. Hmm. And how about after this we watch? We can watch this. And this. All right, so I have the next handful of videos together that we're gonna watch. All right, so like I said, next we're gonna be checking out uh, uh, Salmonella, where animals' scientific names come from. Uh, sometimes when it comes to like scientific names, they really go kind of wild with some of the names. Like, they have stuff all over the place. Like, they have some characters, or some creatures that are named after, like, comic book characters. They have some people named after historical figures. They have some people that are named after, like, just wild stuff. So, it is interesting to check it out. Salmonella has been gone for a minute. It's good to see him come back and make videos again. Like I said, YouTube isn't really the friendliest when it comes to... His channel isn't necessarily historic but it does have a lot of like facts about history and um, uh, the animal kingdom and things like that. And normally that can be pretty uh, tough. Hey, Biller with another gifted sub, this dude is trying to take over the channel. You're like China, you're just buying up all of the uh, assets so you can have complete control, ain't you? Yeah, that's what you're aiming for. <laughs> But um, yeah, let's check out Salmonella Academy. See what it has to offer. Um, I know it's gonna be great because it's Salmonella, but I mean, it's, it's been a minute. Once you reach 20 out of 10, Devon will do a handstand. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. I would destroy my setup. And without a setup, there is no channel and all your gifted subs will go to complete waste. Hey. Man, with enough gift of subs, I can buy a whole new setup. So I guess if you can get it to 2,000 out of 10, then sure, I can do a head and stand. <laughs> that way if I fall and fall on my desk and my computer and stuff, I can just get a new one. Anyway, let's jump over here. All right, so let's get into this Salmonella. Make sure you hit that like button. It's that simple. Uh, if you guys want to show support, that's one way you can do it. Also, checking out their Patreons and any other external or alternative like forms of support you can give, uh, whether it's Patreon or if they have some like secondary website or something that they upload on or provide services for, if they have, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Merchandise. Be sure to check that out because it goes a long way. Like I said, YouTube isn't very kind to uh, content creators that do history or educational related stuff unless apparently you're Prager you because from what I hear they get promoted a lot mainly because their videos get a lot of engagement whether it's positive or negative YouTube doesn't really care but anyway let's check this out Salmonella Academy <laughs> my clothes upside down my back turned <laughs> why are you teaching me ways to trick you Hey kids, I just woke up from a nap I took in January of 2020 and boy are my arms tired. Let's see what I missed. <laughs> hmm. 
queen's dead, war in Ukraine, the Taliban's back. What? What is... Holy shit. <laughs> they made a movie called Scoob. Unprecedented global pandemic, Space mm-hmm. Jam 2, some popular guy named Brandon. Yep, that just about covers it. Anyway, some we all know about the scientific named names of animals, but did you ever wonder what they actually mean? <laughs> to find out, we must look to taxonomists. They're the guys responsible for the systems mm-hmm. of nomenclature we use to classify organisms. And boy, are they convoluted. First, you got the big eight. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I've seen plenty of so mnemonic devices for this, but since the D kingdom. just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fairground staff. <laughs> Dumb kittens pushing cups over feeds growing spite. <laughs> Donkey Kong's p- <laughs> c- oh, fucking c- serendipitously. The way fucking. this whole thing works differs slightly depending on which kingdom you pick. So today we'll be sticking to the animal one, cause that one's the coolest and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary. They basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists I actually like dumb kids puking uh, cereal on fairground staff. I think that, I think that works well. It's pretty arbitrary. They basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. The one exception is species, which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks. Mule, liger, zedonk, skunk ape. They can live fulfilling lives, but they're all shooting blanks, so they don't count. On the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things like Chidane Danes, which actually work, so dogs are dogs are dogs. Besides species, though, it's the Wild Mm -hmm. West in here. Plenty of times, eight tiers isn't even enough for science. So they just stick new sublevels in between. Legions, cohorts, tribes, series, divisions. And if you want to keep going, you can throw all kinds of prefixes on any of these for even more layers. There's even subspecies, which the more pedantic of you may think to yourselves that creating names for subspecies at all kind of undermines the single somewhat agreed upon definition in the whole tree. To that, my friends, taxonomists say, uh-huh. But while that's pretty complex, the actual names themselves are pretty easy to wrap your head around. The taxonomists may hide behind their fancy Greek and Latin. The Vulgate is no substitute for wit. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species, and most of them can be split into a few Chats categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a lion, I'm calling it a leo. Done. Tiger, it's a tigris. Cat, it's a caddis. Easy. Multi-word names can be translated the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila chrysaetos. Gold eagle eagle. They decided to be a show off and do eagle in Greek and Latin. Essentially the same though. Mm. But if a species is too specific or exotic for a one-to-one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration comes from just giving the creature the old once-over and pointing out some cool-looking body part. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in. No scientific name will ever be greater than Tyrannosaurus Rex. They're no greater name. Cool looking body part. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in the name. For example, Homeboy took one look at this thing and said, yup, red triangle slug. I'm going on break. We call this thing a fucking <laughs> unicorn, almost like that means one horn or something. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'ma call them head foot. And now biologists everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Matter of mm, fact, if it's mm, got mm. feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. You got four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, two feet, equal feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big feet, slow feet, or feet, both feet, joint feet, no feet, ten thousand feet, cows feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't look that interesting, another thing to point out is where you found it. This could be a territory like American bear or Siamese crocodile, or just a habitat like woods macaque or toilet rat. But that's boring. We need to look at the men behind the magic and what drives and motivates them. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better way to go down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you found. But not all fields have the same volume of things to scribble the old John Hancock over. On the one end, you got physics just making up their own slightly different form of ionizing radiation measurement. And even then, only the top dogs got away with it. Now, zoology. Any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say, this one has 13 spots, but the one in the books only got 11. I will call him Splinkus's Ladybird. Alternatively, plenty of biologists have given shout-outs to their contemporaries, both other biologists and those across the academic gamut, from geologists to physicists to explorers and more. Naturally, Darwin's got a shitload, but even the background characters get a mortal 
capitalized one way or another. Who are Thompson, Grant, Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier? I don't know, but they've all got gazelles, so they must be pretty cool. Of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with tanks, anything so. except for one taxonomist being a fan of theirs. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named after them, but since all the big cute stuff was found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. Mm -hmm. You got Scaptia, Beyonce, -A. The only similarity I can gather here is Queen Bee looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's a... I think, and I shit you not, the reason that this thing got named after Beyonce was because of the size of its uh, thorax, I think. Not even lying. I think that is literally one of the reasons why they named it after Beyonce. Because it has a big ass. That's it. The only similarity I can gather here is Queen Bee, looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus jagarius, an old stone named after an old stone. In 2007, one Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Myrmechiophila Neil Youngie to honor his favorite musician, which caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV and profess his utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert Report to announce the naming of Apostatist Stephen Colbert. So, if that gives any of you epic biologists mm. out there any ideas, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. <laughs> Please, I would do anything. For the love of God, I'll even take a like in the world of pop. The thing is, watch them fuck up and give the name, like, Secretus Academius or something like that. And it's like, that doesn't, like, yeah, my name is Salmonella Academy, but Academy doesn't really point back to me. You fucked up, man. <laughs> Politics is by no means immune to this phenomenon. Obama alone has fucking nine, as do a load of other presidents. Trump's got a moth with funny hair, Bush has a fungus beetle, Reagan's a wasp, Carter's got a darter, and so forth. Even Austria's most famous painter got the honor through this most blind cave painter. beetle. Mind you, it was 1933, so you can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler actually wrote him a letter saying, oh, thank you, my little entomalo mensch, and then went on to do, you know, Hitler things. Fun fact, mm. not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have, it's also now facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Guess old wow. habits die hard. Oop, fictional characters have their fair share of species under their belt. On the topic of evil beetles, this one's named after Darth Vader because he kind of looks like his helmet, I guess. This was actually named by the same guy who did the Bush one and belongs to the same genus. Hmm. There's also this mite, genus Darth Vaderum, which is a lot more accurate and frightening. In 2012, a single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen had his neck cover with hair and his lips clench into a pog and his endocrine system filled with soil and he said, it's just like the eye of Sauron. And then he started chewing on Funko Pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting G Fuel <laughs> and shitting D20s everywhere until the prostate stimulation made him. The dino's genus is now Sauroniops from Eye of Sauron. This spider was mm. named after Godric Gryffindor because it looks like the sorting hat. SpongeBob has not a sponge, but a fungus. The legendary birds from Pokemon each have their own, you guessed it, beetle. And the list goes on. <laughs> beetle. <laughs> Scientists are nerds. <laughs> Who knew? Anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic. Funny enough, I mean... Yeah, they named them after the Pokemon birds, but the Pokemon birds' names are literally just like Melt 3, uh, Arctic 1, Zap 2. Like, their names are pretty weak to begin with. So, to, yeah, it, it's interesting. Cool. And the list goes on. <laughs> Scientists are nerds. Who knew? Anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic, there is some method to the madness. One rule is the principle of well, priority. Animal this states that once like somebody me. publishes their chosen if name for a species an for the first me, time, the that's be? the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This has and led what, to what plenty of misnomers be? coined by whoever got their foot in the door first. I'm giving you guys a chance to try that out. Like, let's see who can come up with, like, what animal would best associate with me, and what would its name be? Because you, in order to name something after an animal, it has to be something, like, connected there. Like, you can't just pick a random animal and give me a name. Well, I guess you can, but it's more funner if you can think of like, oh, this, I'm giving this animal to you because it relates to you for this reason. And the name is this. I want to see who can come up with something interesting. That once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This has led to plenty of misnomers coined by whoever got their foot in the door first, particularly in the case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. Here's one. Red panda? Nah. Shining cat. Coined in 1825. To be fair, they're actually about as close to cats as they are to actual pandas, so whatever. Here's two. Capsicum chinense. Eaten yeah. there? Sure. Native? Only off by around half a globe, where literally all hot peppers came from. 
syndrome. This principle holds true even if someone thinks they found a new species, only to later discover that it was already named. For example, in 1824, one John Edward Gray documented the plain zebra, calling it Equus Burchellii, or Burchell's horse, named after a renowned naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 1785, some other douche classified this character as the quagga. The last quagga died in a Dutch prison in 1883, so why do we care? Well, in the 2000s, scientists decided to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So technically they're one species, and today they're both called quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, but then again so does asinus, and that worked out fine. Just to maintain the <laughs> distinction, the extinct subspecies was renamed quagga quagga, so you know it's the real quagga. This double naming convention wild has been done safety. with a lot of subspecies, in fact. Wow. Wild wild horse, spotted spotted <laughs> panther, or my favorite, gorilla gorilla gorilla. Just like, yeah, it's the gorilla gorilla that ever grilled. Fuck you want Gorilla 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 reminds me of um there was a period on Cartoon Network where they had like these um advertisement for Hanna Barbera cartoons and they had these like songs that was playing with them like don't you be going round in circles going round in circles and like that song was associated to the Flintstones because you know like on the Flintstones whenever characters would walk the backdrop would just like repeat over and over again and I remember they had one about um, a little girl going to a pet store to buy a pet, and Magilla Gorilla was there. And the song was like, "We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale, for sale. We got a we got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale, for sale." Like I don't know if they still have those, uh, like somewhere on YouTube or anything. If you have a chance to check them out, but I don't even know what, what you would call them. But I just remember distinctly remember those from like my childhood. Like these were around like the early two thousands. Is very interesting, but that's what I think of when I think of Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla, that song. Spotted Panther, or my favorite, Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. Just like, yeah, it's the gorilla gorilla that ever gorilled. Fuck you want from me. A closely related rule like also states that, that the names of all taxa have to be unique. So if two people coincidentally name any taxa on the same thing, the older one gets to stay and the new one gets the boot. Like if you saw a genus called Echidna, you'd think it was, you know, an echidna, right? Well, no, that'd make too much sense. For a while it was true, from 1797 to 1811. Then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels Echidna back in 1788. So the real echidna Echidna had to be changed to Tachyglossus, or Quick Tongue. Then a decade later, a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers. Another 22 years passed, well, we people are, discovered the same thing, and they were renamed though. to Bitis, cause they Bitis. That one at least made a bit of sense, given that the original Echidna from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake, but who cares at this point. Anyway, I've just barely scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there, so feel free to post more down below. That's all I've got for now. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and I'll see ya in 2025. <laughs> See you in 2025, that's funny. But wait a minute, hold up. The echidna thing is the one that I'm still like stuck on because, again, we still call them echidnas, really. Was it maybe like, who knows, maybe video games changed it because, I mean, I call them echidnas because of Knuckles. Did video games throw a wrench in the whole naming scheme? Is that what they're telling me? <laughs> Renaissance Hovel Le D D Devonis. <laughs> I see multiple references in there. I get it. But what is the animal it's attached to? So you gotta you gotta you gotta pick the animal itself. But yeah, this was a, this was another fun video. Um, great to see Salmonella back. Uh, I hope that we don't really have to wait until 2025 for his next video. But at the end of the day, it's like it's really up to you. You get to choose when you want to make your videos. I know sometimes, especially with the way YouTube handles itself uh, recently, it kind of takes motivation away from you to make videos on YouTube. But. At some point, you just gotta make it a passion project. Like, I'm just doing this because I just feel like making videos. Who has made the Echidna's failure? See, that's probably a reference I, 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 I don't get. Told the bitches. 
<laughs> wow. You cannot disrespect Lady D like that. That that that's disrespectful. We gotta show appreciation for the ladies. Everybody, make sure you have your uh, fedora hats nearby and Grotham neck beards, because you know these ladies they need people like us to be out there holding doors open and being nice guys. So you know, always be on standby. Yeah, I will see y'all on YouTube next time. For those of you on Twitch, sit tight because we still have a couple more videos and uh, reactions that we're going to jump into. I look forward to seeing you guys on future videos. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. And I will see y'all next time. Deuces. <laughs>